with our featured guest speaker, Dr. Ilma Martinuzzi O'Brien. Please take your seat and please take a moment to turn off your cell phones. We hope you will enjoy the evening. I welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Kawasit Italian Family History Group March event. My name is Art Phillips. Mi chiamo Arturo Di Filippo. Um, uh, sono il presidente del gruppo genealogico italiano del Kawasit. I'm the chairman of the Italian Family History Group, um, and it's an honor for me to be acting on behalf of the group. Thanks for attending tonight and for your support, um, uh, for coming this evening. The uh, a theme music that you heard is uh, our new theme song. It's called The Family. And it's a piece that I wrote that I thought we could use to launch our events each month since we're using this beautiful performance hall. So, um, uh, and we have a voiceover announcement from a good friend of mine that works at Universal Studios in, in the States that is prepared to do our, a monthly sort of announcement of the guest speaker. So we're trying to sort of up the sort of ante of our events each month. Uh, so tonight we have um, a couple of really exciting items in store. Um, first of all, our featured guest speaker, Dr. Ilma Martinuzzi O'Brien, um, honorary research associate from the School of Historical and European Studies, La Trobe University in Melbourne, who will be speaking of Italians that were interned during World War II in Australia. It'll be quite a moving experience, I think, to hear the facts and the stories that actually happened back in the 40s. Prior to that, we'll have a, a short eight to 10 minute uh, presentation by our treasurer and secretary, Maria Linders, who will show you some PowerPoint presentations about actually the best way to research your family tree and some new programs that are available. So we have a fresh new format in stores you can already see. And of course, this wouldn't be possible without this venue. Um, and I wanted to thank the Actors Center Australia um, for the use of, of, of the main auditorium and also to Coazit for, for their great sponsorship to the Italian, to the Italian Family History Group. Um, I want to thank Dean Carey of the ACA, Alan, um, Asada, um, and Matt, who's doing our sound and lights. Thank you very much, up at the top. But before we commence, uh, I wanted to give you a bit of insight about what the Italian Family History Group do and what we're all about. <clears throat> it was founded in 1999. It's an organization that exists under the auspices of, of Coasset. And um, basically our mission statement is, um, of course, it's a non-for-profit organization, is to promote, to develop, and to nurture um, those interested in researching and tracing their family history. Um, and generally, we are all about sort of promoting anything about Italian um, culture and the passion of it all. Um, but we conduct uh, workshops coming up this year, hopefully, these events, and some seminars throughout the year that could be of interest to everybody. Um, our actual calendar of events in 2014 has 
has slightly altered from the norm because we usually do the fourth Wednesday of every month. But because of the availability of this performance hall, which is a great venue for us, we aren't able to keep to the fourth Wednesday each month. So we had a change them throughout the year. We have a timetable already planned out. And of course, the best way for you to find out what the dates are is if you're on our, our database, you'll get our newsletters a few weeks ahead of time. But if you go to our website, um, all the dates are actually listed there. We won't have one in April, but we will have one the very first part of May. So the next one for you to remember at this point is the 7th of May, um, which is actually a Wednesday night, so, so, so the 7th of May. And um, uh, <clears throat> actually our guest speaker for the 7th of May is a, a lovely lady named uh, Gabriella Adela Fedova Conti, who is going to talk about the authorship of her book, um, Sule I del Arcobalan, yeah? which means on the wings of the rainbow. And she's talking about four generations of her family, the strength of character of her family, and the determination about the hardships that they went through with uh, the immigration to Australia, back to Italy, uh, sort of houses being sold, rebought to generations later. It's really quite an interesting book. So, uh, so we have Gabriella here on the 7th of May, who's sitting here in the front of the audience. So we're going to look forward to that, Gabriella. Thank you very much. And then our next one after that is, is very close. It's on the 29th of, of, of May, where we have Dr. Ann Rogerson from the University of Sydney. She's from the Faculty of Arts and uh, Social Studies um, about uh, classics and ancient history of, of Italy. And she's coming to talk about the greatest disaster that ever happened, really, in Italy, and that was in 79 AD, which is Mount Vesuvius. And she has a lot of documented stories from uh, generations and generations of descendants about what really happened, what, what was actually witnessed. It'll, it'll be really an engaging um, event, I think. So if you can mark your calendars for the 29th of, of May. Um, <clears throat> our, our information can be found on the Coaza website. There is a Italian family history group area and also at www.coaza.ifhg on the history group .org, and we have all the information there about all our events. Um, you would have noticed uh, our new email on the newsletters and also that site, so I think that's all pretty you know, straightforward. Um, we are slowly gaining more sort of expansive presence within uh, the Italian communities here and, and also elsewhere. We were recently asked, which I just found out about a few days ago, there's a event that happens up in Brisbane called Italian Week, and they invited one of our committee members to come up and talk about research, so we're trying to organize that possibility, which is the end of May, that the event actually happens from May 26th to June 1st, so it could be quite interesting. Um, so just a bit of housekeeping before we go on with the, the show. Um, actually, immediately following this evening's event, you can present your colored entry ticket that you received, um, and you can join us all downstairs at a restaurant called Sapore della Vigna, Ostolante, which is here at the Forum, and receive a free coffee or a tea, or alternatively, you might want to use the ticket for a small discount of $2.50 against a meal or a vino. That's probably what I'll be doing. Um, so at the end of the night, which, which will end about 8.30, 8.35, you're all welcome to go down to Sapore and join us all. Um, also wanted to thank our sponsors, and first of all, um, of course, Coazit, for their ongoing support to Leichhardt Council, uh, Moschella Wines, I, IFHN, which is the Italian Family History Network that is run by one of our committee members named Roberto uh, Junta, uh, Web Video, which is his other company that actually does all our filming every night so we can archive these events at the Coazit Library, um, and uh, I understand we might have a, a brand new sponsor coming up, possibly in 2014, um, and we look forward to that, which is uh, a, a gentleman here in the front row named Chris um, uh, Yakima, Yakima, from a olive plantation, um, which is called 
Bonabonu, which is in the Humber Valley, in Maitland, I think, yeah? So anyway, we're looking forward to talking to you about that, yeah? Um, as you all know, I'm pretty passionate about my family heritage. Only about three years ago, I really started to research things, and um, um, I also started to study Italian around that time, and I'm really honored to have a, a, a very good friend of mine and my most favorite teacher here in the audience tonight, which is George, and thank you for coming, and also Sada, and anybody else here from, from Coazza. I really appreciate that. Um, I work in, in the music industry full time, as most of you know, um, and my early credits really is as a guitarist. And the reason that happened is because because I was very, very fortunate that my father and grandfather instilled upon me actually everything to do with music, and I was fortunate enough to pursue that very young in my life. And it wasn't until 44 years after my grandfather passed away, who was a great mandolin player, and 10 years after my father passed away, that I finally did something that my dad always wanted me to do, and that was a tribute album to our Italian heritage and all the songs that I learned on guitar as, as a child. Um, I started to play when I was five or six. So about 10 years ago, I decided to do a tribute album to my father called um, Chitarra Acoustica di Italia, which means Acoustic Guitars of Italy, where I recorded basically in the same arrangements that I learned from my grandfather's kitchen. We used to go over there every, every night and play, and I learned all these great Italian songs, and most of them were from uh, the region of Napoli, because there was a lot of passion that came from there in terms of, of music and, and composition. So uh, one of the things that we're going to do each, each month, if you'll allow me, is uh, that I'll play one piece of music from that heritage, from, 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 that, from that time period. And, and they're either early uh, songs from the early 1900s or, or 1940s or 1950. And tonight I thought I would play a piece called Non Dimenticar, which was written, written in 1951, which means do not forget. And it was actually to a, uh, a film, an Italian film called Anna. I don't know if anybody's ever seen it, but basically Anna is a nightclub singer, and later she becomes a nun, where she sinfully falls in love with one of the patients at, at the hospital. So it's, it's a real dramatic love story that actually turns around, and um, it's a beautiful piece in Non Dimentico. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> um, so, um, I wanted to do a quick presentation here this evening with Maria Linders, who will actually be talking about um, a really good, clever ways, um, modern ways to research your family tree with some new found um, website of the digital domain. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Maria. This one? Okay. Actually, Matt, I'm sorry, I've got to get the remote from you. <laughs> um, yeah. Sorry, I'll just get this slideshow going for you. And, um, Is it bad? What's there now? It's a full screen. Yay, we did it. Thank you. Okay, um, you remember last month, actually, I, Matt, are you up there? I just need the remote to change the slides. But, you can do it for me? Okay, thanks. Right, oh, sorry. Okay, last month we talked a, a little bit about starting a family heritage, and it was, um, we talked about being online, which, as you'll probably have, have the modern speak for having it on the internet. Uh, some, some people are a bit nervous about starting to put their uh, family history on online, so I'm going to just go through a little bit of being offline. So earlier we just talked about whether we should or we shouldn't, okay, and if we decide to stay offline for the moment till we get the hang of what we're doing, um, you have to decide what software you might want to use for your PC or Mac. Okay, there's a huge range of software out there, and the easiest way is to just go into Google and ask for genealogy software for my Mac or software for Windows, okay. There's a huge amount. A lot of it is free. Okay, these are a few of the um, software ones. You can download it straight from the internet. You don't have to go to the shop and buy a disc. And uh, these are three of the main ones that are quite commonly used. They start off free, um, but be we are. Even, when, even though they say it's free, it's usually just very basic. So it mainly have, you may only be able to use one or two features of that particular software. Um, when you download it for free. If you wanted more of the more advanced features that are in that software, well then you may possibly have to pay for the use of that. Okay. Alternatively, you can go to a, a shop and buy a software program. Um, being on a Mac, I bought um, Mac Family from the Apple Store. Um, the beauty of having buying that, you'll have the disk which you can use for which, whichever many uh, Macs you may have, or computers you may have, and also if you don't quite know how to use it all, you'll have, you'll have the disks and have someone else help you and uh, take you through how it all works. What I find best is I combine offline with online, and um, if, you, if that's the case, the basic software will probably do, because all you'll do in the basic software is enter people's names, dates of birth, and and so forth, which you can, which is adequate for what you want to start off. Okay. These are the benefits. I find online is wonderful. 
because if people who are usually surfing the net looking for other family members, they Google your name or they Google their name and that pops your family tree. Even um, as I said to you last month, you usually have privacy settings on your family tree on, when it's online, but people will have the opportunity to email you and say, hey, I'm so-and-so, we may be related. So it, there is a benefit of being online, and I have met lots of my um, distant cousins in America through being having on both sides, the Rabisi side and the Stranger side, by having my family tree, on, tree online. Offline is good um, because well, even though you have it online, you never want to trust their servers or they may suddenly decide to go out of business. So you should regularly back up what's online onto your computer. And also, you may wish to have it um, offline because you may get information but you don't really know where that person fits yet. So, so you don't lose it, you may um, start a separate little family in the offline, offline program to enter that information. So it's very important to use both. Right. So when you start using a family tree or genealogy program, you'll hear this word JEDCOM. Okay? And you'll say, what, you know, what, what is JEDCOM? And that, that's the proper meaning of it, genealogical data communication. But basically, every, every genealogy program uses JEDCOM. So as I said earlier, if you download, download a backup copy of your um, family tree that's online, it will download as a JEDCOM file. And then that JEDCOM file, you can just upload it onto your program that you have on your computer. Very important to regularly back up. Don't ever trust anything. It goes with anything. Any, I'm, I'm paranoid because I know I went away on holidays and I got an email from Apple saying that they found a fault in these internal drives and you should have it checked out. And by the time I got home, it was pssst, all gone. But fortunately, um, I had backed up everything and I was able to, once they gave me a new internal drive, um, I was able to put everything back in. But don't ever, ever trust anything. I have now two external drives backing each other up because it's a horrible feeling if you come home or you turn on your computer one day and it's just a blank screen and you think, oh my God, all my photos are on there, all my family trees on there. So it's very important to back up Okay, external drives are really cheap, so you go out and buy lots of them. And as I said, I, I dovetail them all on so that they're all backing each other up. Okay, all right. You cannot open a JEDCOM file unless you have a family tree, a genealogical um, program on your computer. Okay, so if you down up, sorry, if you back up what's on online and you have this file that says JEDCOM, it's of little use to you because you can't open it unless you have your program on your computer. So you can see why you need to use both offline and online. Okay, so right, so you've got your program, whether you're using online or offline, and you have to start. And where do you start? First person, naturally, is yourself. All right, so you have, you have this super duper program and it has their first name, middle name, surname, date of birth, where you were born, um, if you're married, name your spouse, when it happened, where it happened. And so you merrily fill in all this information first. That's your starting point is yourself. Because you know or should know something about yourself. Okay. So then once you get that going, then you start on your parents. Your two parents. And you go, look, you do exactly the same. And this is when you start, if your parents are still alive. Unfortunately, mine were both, both um, had passed on and... I couldn't ask them anything by the time I got interested in doing family tree. So if you've still got family, a lot of parents alive, start now, because once they go, a lot of information is lost forever. But, if, um, but fortunately, when my mum, she was dying of cancer, she knew she was dying, she actually gave me this big envelope of stuff, and I, and I, I didn't really even look in it. I just sort of, I've got a memory box, I stuck it in the memory box, forgot about it, I didn't even look at it, for many years until I decided to do my family tree. And I thought, I wonder what's in that envelope. And in there was her marriage certificate. There was all sorts of interesting things. There was um, naturalisation certificates. There were um, birth certificates of mum and dad. And it was also so exciting. But, you know, I would never... She gave me that and, uh, and I didn't even think anything of it until I suddenly decided to get interested. So, you know, if your parents are still alive or family, go there and dig out what you can take it. 
take all these bits of paper that they don't that they want anymore, or old photos, um, and try and find out who's who. So once you've done your parents, now it's getting more difficult. You start looking for your grandparents. All right, there's four of those. Okay, and then you start again looking for birth date, where they were married, where they married, who they who their spouse was, where they died, um, where they were buried, when, where. So now it's time to start talking to people to try and find out, and then we go on and on, and it's great grandparents. When you've done all that, you can start going forward, and you can start putting your children in if you have children, and your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren if you have some. So your tree is growing backwards and downwards, and becomes all very interesting, okay? Because basically, your family history is just one big puzzle, and you need to keep all the photos and notes. And when you speak to somebody, write everything down because you forget. It's very hard to remember everything that someone tells you. So where can you get your information? From your memory, from your family members, photos and old documents. And where else? Okay, our next um, meeting, or actually I won't be at the next meeting, but the meeting on the 29th of May, I'll go further and we'll discuss about um, researching beyond the family where I can give you some interesting um, websites where you can start looking. Also, we were putting together a starter kit, which I don't know where it's up to, but um, we hope to have that starter kit um, ready to hand out to anyone interested in doing their family tree, which will give you some of these notes and other items. If you've got questions, um, unfortunately I'm very limited in my time here, so I can't take questions from the floor, but what we are considering is maybe having a little informal get-together one Saturday or Sunday, anyone that's interested or you've got questions you want to ask me about, and we can run through these um, slide shows again to refresh your memory. At the moment, um, what I'm suggesting you do, if you log onto our website, which is www.coasset.ifhg, Italian Family History Group org, and on there you'll find a Contact Us link, which will look like that, and you'll see that where it says to, It'll be, there's a little drop down box and it'll have my name plus other names. So just click on Maria Linders, put your name in, or we shall say if you're in. But anyway, you put your name in, not my name, your email address, and just put at the bottom, interested in joining Maria for a family tree discussion, and just put in which, which day you would prefer and whether you prefer afternoon or morning. This will happen in May because I'm going away shortly. So I'm hoping you do it sometime mid May, mid to end, end May. So if you're interested or you just want to ask me some questions, please register your interest because we'll only do this if we get enough people interested. And that's it. Thank you. And please come up again. Uh, Maria, thank you very much. Uh, so Maria is uh, very instrumental in keeping our group uh, uh, on top of things. She's our secretary and treasurer, so I really appreciate it. Uh, the backup thing is really, really important. I think we've all been there, and uh, a must. And uh, uh, the program that I use to do my family tree is called Family Tree, but I think Maria and I will be talking about uh, me upgrading my program to something much, much more efficient. Um, the Italian Family History Group starter kits, they are just getting underway. I would say probably by the next meeting we'll probably have those happening to hand out to all our members.